welcome with us. This is called, this is uh, uh, Pentecost Sunday, where there was the Pentecost, the Holy Ghost fell upon the church. You're going to enjoy today. Make sure you have your Bible and your note pens. You're ready. Give them a big round of applause for joining with us. And I want you guys, if you would, to turn to Psalms 71, if you would. But I'm going to go another place right now beforehand. I got this uh, scripture that I want to read to you. It's in uh, 1 John. How many know this is an exciting time uh, for the church? Because the can you imagine 120 people? All those people, there were 500 that followed Christ, and only 120 went into the upper room. And they were sitting there that day. And on day number 10, how many know sometimes you have to wait on God? Right? He didn't say, he said, tarry. Hey, I believe some of them would have tarried 100 days. But on the 10th day, Pentecost, because what Pentecost means is 50. And that's what that means. And on that day, that's when the Spirit of God fell upon him. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, it says this, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So I want to let you know there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're all three one in the same. And today is Pentecost Sunday, and we celebrate the descending of the Holy Spirit upon His disciples in the upper room. And Pentecost Sunday was the commissioning, if you didn't know that, of the church to go and preach the Word. God empowered them to do what He wanted them to do. So, Heavenly Father, as we get ready to start, I ask for Your anointing today. I thank You, God, for Your Word. I thank You that Your Word is true. I thank You, Holy Spirit, that You live in us. And you, and you want your glory to shine through us. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Psalm 71, 18 has a command for us. Did you know that? We, we're, we have, our church has a little bit of the generation that's a little bit older. But we're going to believe the younger ones are coming. Amen. But what are we? It says, he, uh, David said this, Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to the generation and your power to everyone who is to come. How many know we have a job and a commission to pass on the gospel of Jesus Christ to the next generation? Listen, whatever happened to the days where you would see people come to the altar even during preaching sometimes? We have services now that we're taught that in an hour and 15 minutes you've got to get done and get out, and sometimes it's somebody else is coming after so you can get the other crowd. That's wonderful, but sometimes there are churches that don't have those, and we still say you have only so long to preach. My job is to do this, share the Word, and if the Spirit of God, and when He shows up, we let God move. Can we get an amen? If God wants to move, God wants. If a Rick wants to get up and run around like he did a couple of months ago, God bless him in the name of Jesus. Whatever happened to those days where we saw the gifts of the anointing hit the body, and right when we would slow down in music, there'd be somebody that would declare out in a tongue, and then somebody over here would declare an interpretation of it, and it would lift up the body. How many remember those days? Come on. And it would be those times that you would walk out of there with a prophetic word to the body of Christ that would be an encouragement that would lift up. But we're having a whole different generation flowing. And we have people, I saw a reel this past week where the guy said, hey, we, he was mocking it, making fun of it. He says, okay, we got to have a certain amount of, uh, of, of announcements that you do. Yeah, I know people that actually, uh, churches right now, that rehearse their announcements before everybody gets there, and they tell the person, you have 45 seconds to get that done. You have this. I know churches, personal friends of mine, go to church. They're to stand on an X on a stage, and at a certain time, they're all to lift their hands and bring it down so the people out there can see them worshiping the Lord. Back in my day... You might have the drummer stop playing drums and you look back, he's out on the floor in the Spirit of God and he can't even move. How many remember that? When the Spirit would show up. You might have a singer get up there and all of a sudden tears start rolling down their face because the Holy Spirit begins to move on them. I'm here to tell you, I want all that and more in Jesus' name. How about you? Come on. And we have an obligation to pass on to the next generation to don't forget all these things. We want to make sure that we don't forget. How many know the day of Pentecost? Can you imagine? Shocked everybody. They had their very shadow would walk, Melissa. 
fairy shadow would walk by people and the, their shadow would touch somebody and they'd get healed because there were so many people that were lined up to get healed. They couldn't touch everybody, so their very shadow would touch. How many know that was the Holy Spirit that did that? Can I get an amen? Come on. God is good, amen? That's why. All right, it's not in my notes. I'm just going there. All right. Is it okay? Yes, it is. Thank you, brother. Okay, here it is. What about when Jesus showed up and they were upset that he didn't get there early enough and Lazarus died? Okay? He stayed back on purpose so that you may see the glory of God is what it says. That the glory of God even resurrected a dead man from four days ago, and let, God, I got good news, man. Let me tell you, those of you that are waiting for your loved ones to come along, God is going to resurrect their dead souls and bring them back to life again. They're going to get filled with the Spirit. They're going to get back in the house of God. They're going to get born. Listen, I'm prophetically speaking that because I know He's going to do it. In the last days, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. That's what He said, and He's doing it. Yeah, come on, man. God is good. Say amen. Amen. Jesus told his disciples to wait in the upper room. See, God wants us to have his glory shine through us. That's why when we're at a Dunkin' Donuts, eating donuts, the Spirit of God walks in the room and brings a new guy who said, how do I get saved? Don't I have to have a... Did he not ask that? That, that sort of sounds like the jailers back in the day. What must I do to get saved? And he said, today you and your whole household will be saved. That's the glory of God. See, we like the goosebumps. We like the people. I, everybody, but sometimes you don't get that when you're flowing with God. You might be eating a donut out of Dunkin' Donuts and the glory is showing up and you don't really realize that God's about to go right through you into somebody where their soul and their spirit is going to become born again where every angel in heaven was rejoicing on Monday night when they turned Jesus turned to him and said hey so and so just got Jesus uh, God opens his book and writes that name declares that name out into heaven and all the angels begin to shout and dance and say hallelujah because he became born again and you don't know and I don't know that might be the next Billy Graham we always say you don't know that and if they aren't the next Billy Graham thank God they got born again their whole family will come to the house of the Lord man spirit of God is moving and that's why when you walk out of a Burger King or wherever you're at and a young girl followed us out and said aren't you ministers we didn't even say anything to her because the glory will shine through you sometimes without you even knowing it at the right time we need to pass that on to the next generation and let them know that Jesus is Lord hallelujah Come on, man. Turn to your neighbor and say, shake it up a little bit. Look look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You shall receive power. That's dunamis power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea, Samaria, and to the inner parts of the earth. That might be a Dunkin' Donuts. Come on, somebody. That might be a Publix. That might be where you work at. You'll be his witnesses. How dare us be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've got the glory of God living in us. We're his hands and his feet, Rick. We're the, we're the ones he's called. Acts chapter 2, 1 and 4. Now, I'm just building here, so get ready. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, that, now think about it, about 2,000 years ago, They were all in one accord in one place. So they're sitting in there and they're waiting. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them different tongues as of fire and set on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
So there they're sitting there. And all of a sudden, Zane and Brian and all the world well, just pretend it's us. You know, I got 120. All of a sudden, he starts like, yeah, da, da, ba, show him, go, look, look. And all of a sudden, it hits me. Then it hits her. Then it hits you. And all of a sudden, then they go out in their own native language. And God begins to give them wisdom where they're witnessing to people all over the place. That spirit that did that is God. And he's still alive and he's still moving amongst you. Can I ask you a question with no condemnation? When's the last time you led somebody to Christ? No condemnation here. Say, Lord, let your glory flow through me today. Lead somebody my way that I could pray for. I want to be used by you. Just say that little prayer. It may be eight months later. It may be nine months later. It may be at your work when sister so-and-so comes in and she's got these migraines going up. And you say, Did you, do you mind if I pray with you? I'm a Christian. And God will tell you to put your hands on her and you pray. And all of a sudden, by the end of the day, she comes up to you and says, Debbie, thank you for praying for me. All the pain left my body. I didn't even have to take an Excedrin pill or nothing. And it left me. And then you can say, he's called the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Come on. He's called the Holy Spirit. And he touched your body. Can we get a praise in here? Come on, somebody. The the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is a permanent gift bestowed upon all believers when you got saved. There's the infilling, there's salvation, there's infilling. I'm going to show you right here. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, that's when you got saved, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Come on, somebody. Let me give you a case in point how that is. Here comes the box. Here comes the guy. It's sealed. It's it's dated. When you got born again, you got sealed by the Holy Spirit. He lives in you. You are his property. Come on, somebody. And he loves you. Come on. And it goes on. That's what happened when you got saved. But being filled with the Spirit goes beyond possession. Okay? You're God's property, but there's called an infilling of what they call the baptism of the Holy Spirit because in the upper room, they all were followers of Christ. They believed in Jesus. We'll see where Paul went to certain churches and said, I know you believe, but have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? He said, yeah, it's a dunamis power. It means being filled and immersed in the Holy Spirit with the evidence. The evidence was their prayer language. They had a prayer language that they did. It's all through the Word. And I used to have a struggle with that. But I knew that I was born again, and I remember asking God, I want to be baptized in your Spirit. I want to be filled. Let me tell you something. One of the proofs that you have the Holy Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit will flow through you. Love, joy, peace. You get changed. Maybe you dealt with anger all your life. You asked the Holy Spirit. You asked Jesus to come in. You got born again. And guess what? You noticed your anger isn't as bad. You noticed your foul language started going away because your evidence the Holy Spirit lives in you. He's doing work. That's called sanctification. Sanctification is an ever-going work that God does for us. He sanctifies every day. I'm not where I was yesterday, praise God. I'm not where I'm going to be in another year from now. God is constantly growing. Paul even said, I have not arrived yet. See, I have not arrived. God is always working in us. Once you get born again, you have the Holy Spirit in you. It is what produces the fruit. Now watch this. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, 4. We read that. We're going to read it again. And when the day of Pentecost fully come, they were all filled in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole place where they were sitting. Then they, prepared, then they appeared to them different tongues of fire and set on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. It was the Holy Ghost that did. Now look in Acts 19 because some people say, oh, I don't know. How does that work? Well, here it is. Acts 19, 1 through 7. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. Now, get this, you got to get the story here. Here comes Paul. He's coming through Ephesus. He's coming in. And all of a sudden, he ends up at this house church. And he goes, and finding some disciples, he said to them. This is the first thing he said. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Watch what they say. Because he's wanting them to know about the power of, These are disciples. The Bible just said disciples. That means they were followers of Christ. He found some. He went to them. And watch what he did. And they said to him, 
we have not so much as heard whether there's a Holy Spirit. What are you talking about? Who, who's the Holy Spirit? We, we don't know what you're talking about. And he said to them, well, then what were you baptized? And they immediately said, oh, John's baptism. We, got, we believed and we got water baptized like we're supposed to. We did what John said and what Jesus, we believed and baptized. Okay. So he says, all right. He said, John, verse 4. Then Paul said, oh, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him, should come after him. That's on Jesus Christ. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke with tongues, and they prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. These are born-again believers, saved, washed in the blood. The minute he touched them, boom, they got filled with the Holy Spirit. And what happened? They got the baptism. Ephesians chapter 5 says, Don't be drunk with wine, in which is this dissipation, but be, look at this, filled with the Spirit. It's going to be filled. Speak to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart unto the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God. In the name of the Father, uh, in the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, submitting to one another in the fear of God. He encouraged believers to be filled with the Spirit. And being filled with the Spirit is to be controlled and obey what God is saying. You will manifest Christ-like behavior. Look at that. You will, if you're born again and the Holy Spirit lives in you, Corky, you will sooner or later start manifesting Christ-like behavior. Let me tell you what Christ-like behavior isn't. Still using the language you used to live before you got saved. Nasty guy. Going out and partying. Wait a minute. God will take you from all that stuff. You should have Christ-like behavior. And then I put on here, your attitude will be one of joy, thanksgiving, and being a nice person. You ever met Christians, some of them that just mean, they're always nasty? Where's Christ in their life? They should be being nice. I mean, doesn't mean you ain't going to have a bad day, but you ought to be nice. And I put in here, this is very clear. I want everybody to hear this. Walking in sin will hinder the fullness of of his manifestation in your life. So when you go home, you do not know how many, I wouldn't say it's a lot, but it's a handful, of men and women that have been in my office and confessed hidden sin that they're doing and they don't have breakthrough. The internet, pornography. Had a children's minister come one time, tell me all, it's been doing pornography, it's been bothering me. Do you need deliverance? I mean, I need deliverance. Come on, somebody. Got another guy um, that uh, said he still smokes dope. He said, well, God created it. and You know, it's, it's like a plant. You can still do. He wants to smoke his marijuana and everything is cool. Well, God made strychnine, too. Birds can eat it, but you can't. Help me out, somebody. Right? And so they were sitting there, and they, and they get high. No. I said, God wants you to manifest The fullness of God, but if you're messing around with sin, it will hinder. How many know, have you ever been to a church where you walk in and everything looks good, but something doesn't feel right, and then three or four months later the pastor stepped down because he was having an extramarital affair? You know what happened? He was quenching the move of God because he was doing sin and still going behind the pulpit. That can happen. You can quench The move of God by disobeying what God says. Any kind of sin. So you have to watch it. If you're struggling in an area, say, God, here it is. I struggle in this. Take this from me. Didn't David say, take not thy Holy Spirit. Create in me a clean spirit, O God. Psalm 51. That's still today. Psalms 40. Look at this. I mean, Ephesians 40. Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at this. And do not grieve. God, you can grieve the Holy Spirit. Think about that. Think about that. You can grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. We just talked about He sealed you, right? But you can grieve Him. Watch what He says. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, 
evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Notice that he didn't say, and it's in there, it's still sin, but he's now took the sin realm down a little bit. You don't hear adultery, murder, stealing. He now makes it a little more personal. Because a lot of Christians aren't doing that, but bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. You know what? I just didn't like her dress on Sunday. Did you see it? Yeah, I didn't like the color. Of she went and got a tattoo, too. Oh, I did say that. all that's getting rough, man. You know what? It says stop speaking evil about other brothers and sisters in the Lord. With all anger and malice, be kind to one another. Look at this. Tender hearted forgiving one another even as god in christ forgave you so what somebody got mad at you did you wrong at work or in church or whatever he's saying be nice to one another because when you don't guess what you are grieving the holy spirit of god see we think grieving is like what we just said the porno the adult no he also said your malice your envy your anger toward other people Get over it. Get by it. Don't let those people pull you down. Give it over to the Lord. Living by God's will and striving for holiness are essential for experiencing the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Look at it. Being filled with the Holy Spirit equips believers and empowers them to boldly proclaim the gospel. Now look at that. Just look at that. Living by God's will and striving for holiness are essential for experiencing. They are of the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit equips believers and empowers them to boldly proclaim the gospel. We're either going to live for God or not. So what does the Holy Spirit do? When you get born again, He comes in us and He begins to change us. He begins us to make us more Christ-like. That's what the Word says. We just read that the three are one. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. They're in heaven. The three on one. That's what they do. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go through a few facts right now. Number one, he's omnipotent and omnipotent. He's everywhere. He knows everything. He knows where you're at. He knows what you're struggling with. He's there. Number two, the Holy Spirit dwells in the believer after salvation. You don't get him before salvation. You get him after salvation. Okay? And he's not an it. He's not a thing. Okay? Right? He's God. Matter of fact, most people don't know this, but Jesus is in heaven. He went up to heaven. He said, I'll send you one. He's not here. He's up in heaven. But the Holy Spirit's here, and the two are one. So they all work together, okay? People say, how does that work? I, you know what? Only God knows how that works. But I have a body, I have a soul, and I have a spirit. All three of them are right here standing in front of you, all right? One of them's going up to heaven. Come on. body will be decayed. But according to what Christ said when he returned, that which was dead, he raises back up. Well, no, it's a whole other sermon. Okay, so there you go. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Trusted, you've heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee, look at this, verse 14, of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purpose, uh, purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Yes! John three sixteen. My favorite, one of my favorite verses, you guys know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Many think they have to earn him. You don't have to earn him. He already paid the price. You just have to receive him. Whew, come on, somebody. God is good all the time. He Now look at this. I'll, you get this next one, okay? He is not the reward for holiness, He's your source for holiness. Write that down if you're looking. At it. Take a picture. Think about that. He is not the reward for holiness. He is your source for holiness. You can't be holy enough. He's the one that makes you holy. That's why God said, be holy for I am holy. Who's living in you wants you to be Christ-like. The Bible says, be imitators of God. That's in the Word. Oh, I just, I'm a sinner and I'll always, no, stop saying that. He's, been, he's living in you. You don't have to. Yes, your flesh wants to, but he now lives in you, and you can overcome. And he said, he that overcomes will inherit all things. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Well, I just continue to do it because it's the way. No, stop it. 
That means that means that thing's greater than the power that lives in you. I told you guys this when my daughter came home. I'm going to get a job Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You know, y'all remember that story? And I said, oh, and I went in there and got a pat out. I said, I found three things that God can't do. And she goes, Miss Candace, she said, what are you talking about? Well, you just you can't get a job Monday when nobody's going to do it. So we so we found something that God couldn't do. She goes, now you're being smart, Alecky. I said, a little bit. And it was two days later, three days later, Jennifer's cutting my hair. And yes, I got a little haircut over the weekend. Anyway, then Jennifer does it. So Jennifer cut my hair, and she said, Pastor Brian, you know anybody that late needs work? Only, but only three days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, to answer the phone. What days? Just Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I said, I got the person. So I'll never forget, I walked in the house and did my Ric Flair walk. Come on, somebody. I said, guess what God did? We prayed. Two days, three days later, there's a job, and she got the job. Listen, he's not a reward for your holiness. He is your source for holiness. Believing for great things. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you've been saved through faith, it's not of yourself, it's the gift of God, not of your works, lest anyone should boast. So it's Pentecost Sunday. Well, what, what does he give? What are some of the gifts? Well, let's look at it real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, look at verse 7, 11. You guys came to church on a good day. But the manifestation of the Spirit, listen, we want to see manifestations of his Holy Ghost, what he does. Manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. But what is it given for? For the profit of it all. This is for the church. Like when somebody speaks a tongue out loud and an interpretation. That's a gift of the Spirit for the profit. So what does God give you? Somebody, somebody's got one of these. For the one is given for the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To the other, word of knowledge. Same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To others, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kind of tongues. To another, the interpretation tongue. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. And it's for the body of Christ. It's for us to grow together. Number four. We already learned this, but the Holy Spirit can be grieved by the way we live. And we just read, we read that. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. They sealed with redemption with bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. Put away from you all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as Christ forgave us. Right? Number five, look at this. Do you know the Holy Spirit prays for you? What? Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us. Hallelujah! With groanings which cannot be uttered. If you get to a point where you just don't know what to do, just say, oh, and as you're groaning, God hears it, and He takes it to, to God. Come on. We were at a, we were at a, ah, God, it's got to be, what, 30 years ago. We were at a meeting. It was probably about, I don't know, 18 to 20 in a house, and we were in a circle, and a lady named Marsha. Remember Marsha do this? Out of nowhere. Remember Marsha? Oh! Oh! And tears began to flow. And all she did was groan, and everybody in there could feel the heat of the Spirit of God go up. Nobody got up and said an eloquent word. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. And He intercedes for us. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news, Frank? Isn't that good news? He prays for us. Well, I'm struggling with drugs. Well, He's praying for you that you don't. I'm struggling with cussing. He's praying for you so you don't. Hallelujah. I deal with anger. He's praying that you don't. He doesn't want to be grieved. So he, yes, Lord, yes, get him. Yes, kill him. Stop that, stop that cussing. Stop that drinking. Stop that stuff. Come on. Hey, listen, there's Christians that struggle for a long time. Doesn't mean they're not Christian, but they're asking God to help them. Listen, 
You didn't walk away and just lose your salvation because you went and had a drink somewhere or you're struggling with drugs and all. I believe that when you're saying, God, here I am, I am struggling in these areas, and I need your help. And God knows when you love him. He knows when you're hurt. You don't, you, don't, you don't discipline your kids when they're two years old and they can't eat certain kind of food or something. you got to wait till their body's adjusting. You don't do certain things. It's the same thing when we walk with God. Here's the problem with your walk with the Lord. When you know you're not supposed to do something and you do it anyways with no fear of the Lord and ain't worrying, now you're in jeopardy of grieving the Holy Spirit and losing what God gave you. Can I get an amen? Yeah. You know what kept my man? I wish he was here. My father passed away in 2001. He never went to church because he was scared to because he smoked. He said, I know this is keeping me away. I said, Dad, God loves you. He's not keeping you away because of that. Just go. That's the devil keeping you away. But I remember when he moved in with us, with one night I heard him there. <laughs> you better get off me, devil. Get thee behind me. Get thee behind me. Remember we heard him? Get out. Get out, devil. And I said, God, God, get him in here. Get him in here. My dad's in heaven. Come on, somebody. Don't let the devil keep you from the house of the Lord because of something you're struggling with. It is Satan that doesn't want you to go to church. God never tells you to stay away. He wants you to go to the house of the Lord. You know, he says, forsake. Listen, can I tell you something? He doesn't double talk. If he says, forsake not the fellowship of the saints, he means forsake not the fellowship of the saints. Can I get an amen? Number six. He lives in you to give you authority to overcome, look at that, the devil. Go on, man. Luke 9, 1 and 2. Then he called his 12 disciples together. And look at what Jesus did. And he gave them power. Everybody say power. Say it like you mean it. Say power. power. And authority <laughs> over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to God and heal the sick. Come on, man. He's still doing the same. You know what he tells me to do? I'm going to show you right here. Pastor Zay and I both. Is there any sick among you? Call for the elders of the church. Have them anoint them with oil. And the prayer of faith. Now watch, you get a double blessing. We all stop. Shall heal the sick. And if they've done any sin, it shall be forgiven of them. Woo! Come on, somebody. That's good news. Do you know when I'm not feeling well, this is what I do. Father, I just pray over me right now. Anoint myself with oil. I tell my body, line up with the Word of God. I fight. When I've had kidneys, I Lord, I thank you. Body strike. Come out. Come out. Come out. And you know what? Most of them have been coming out in one day instead of 10 or 15 days. Get out. Not allowed to be up on me. I passed one a couple of uh, the day we were baptizing. I had to go baptize in the morning. I go, you got to be kidding me. Before I left, pass the stone. Come on, somebody. It didn't say it. Dropped right around within 20 seconds, 30 seconds. How many know? I'm believing they're never coming back. Can I get an amen? I still believe the best. I'm believing my wife's foot. We laid, we've anointed it with oil. She's getting better. Her arms hurt. They try, who do you think's doing all that? The devil doesn't want her lift in her arms. But I believe in the name of Jesus that all these are being healed because he's told us to anoint with oil. Listen, he gave us the power over all. Man, God is good, amen. So when you're cleaning up in here, if you see that, this is mine, okay? All right, so there's that. Pastor Brian's oil right there. Have you ever encountered a devil? And we're not going to talk about a lot, but you ever encountered one? Anybody ever had to, I mean, you ever seen anybody get delivered? Anybody ever seen that? Who has not ever seen anybody get delivered? Anybody here? Okay. All right, let me tell you what happened real quick. All of a sudden, they hired us down at Cape Coral, and Paul and I believe in the power and the anointing. He said, and I'll never forget, we were at Kingsway, and all of a sudden they said, get Pastor Brian, I'm the youth pastor. It's Wednesday night. We were at, we were at if you guys know where Del Prado, you guys don't know, some of you might know where Del Prado is. Down there, there's a, there's a Lutheran church, right? It has big bells there. That's where we were renting on Wednesday night. And we, we would go, they even had a picture, a big statue of Jesus like this being written 
things from her head to the back, you know. Sort of a little different, but you know what? God showed up, you know. So, anyways, I get, get Brian. I want to come walking around the corner. There's a guy in a room. He's got a devil. He's, rah, 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 rah. He's screaming and all that. And all of a sudden, I come walking around the corner. And, man, the power of the Spirit of God hit me. I, I, I felt drunk, told Paul. I felt, I feel like I'm drunk. I made my way into that room, and I said, get your hands off. And all of a sudden, he let out a scream, and the other people were sitting there all sweaty because they were trying to hold, big guy, trying to hold him. And next thing you know, about, about, I don't know, maybe about 30 or 40 seconds, all of a sudden, you see him drop, and all of a sudden, he starts weeping. God filled him up. The devil left him. I got in the car. First thing we did was we told all the kids, get out of the way, because, you know, you use wisdom, so you don't want to scare them. Then we had another one happen. Oh, my goodness. Then he started hitting me in the stomach. Boom, boom. Started kicking me. What's wrong with me, Pastor Brian? Ah. Then she'd do like that, and I just had to grab her. And they put, it was so dumb. The elder walked me out the back door with her and said, here, take care of her. And they left me by myself out of back door of a building. So when she kicked me, I had to grab her and throw her to the ground. She was beating me up. And I'm screaming, somebody help. Get off her in the name of Jesus. I need help. Get off her in the name. I'm doing dual, dual things. Guess what? She got set free. She plays keyboard and worships God. Had a teenager do the same thing. But you got to know when you see that, you don't have to be afraid. Listen, when he gave us dunamis power on the day of Pentecost, we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have authority over that. Now, there are a lot of people who say, oh, we go out and cast out demons. All. Stop that. You don't go out looking for demons every day. You don't have to run around all that. Listen, when they show up, you'll know it. Had it over at City Life happen. Some people, you got to lay hands. You better know what you're doing. You know how to know what you're doing? Let me ask you this, and this will this will qualify everybody. In. By a show of hands, how many have asked Jesus to come into their heart by a show of hands? Okay, guess what? Your husband is a police officer. Does he wear a badge? Does he have authority to pull you over if you're speeding or whatever? No. Well, just by the show of your hands, you have authority over every devil, and you're more powerful than that thing that's inside of him. So you don't have to worry, and don't think of the TV shows where you saw and all that kind of stuff. Just know you have authority, and you tell them to get out, and they got to go. And you don't have to fear, because Jesus lives in you. They fear you. You don't fear them. Don't you remember the guy that had the demoniac? I'm trying to teach you stuff about the Holy Spirit, how powerful it is. What happened? Jesus got the Holy Spirit, and he's anointed by God, right? And then when he showed up, the demon like, no, no, no. Demon's all screaming, no, 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 no. Can we go on the pig? Yeah. So it's just the opposite. It's just the opposite. Well, Walk in here, no sense of spirit. No, no, you have authority in the name of Jesus. Okay, I just want to give, trying to build your faith here to know He lives in you, and greater is He that is in you than He that's in the. Now, okay, you, you got, you're getting it. Number seven, we're wrapping it up here. He will build you up in your faith. There's a book called Jude. It's right before the book of Revelation. When you open up Revelation, Jude is right before it. It's only one chapter. And what it says in there in verse 20, But you, beloved, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You don't have to be praying in the Spirit of God. Well, I've never been back. If you ask God, He'll give it to you. The Holy Spirit lives in you, and you have access to God's wisdom. You are helped by God. Now, get ready, because we're about to jump. You're helped by God. You're reconciled to God. You're not condemned by God. You're justified by God. You are Christ's ambassadors. You're completely forgiven and you're completely free. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You are blameless and beyond reproach. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Come on, church. And it also said, you are Christ's friend. You are chosen by Christ to bear fruit. You are joint heirs with Christ, sharing in his inheritance. You are members of Christ's body. You are hidden in Christ with God. You're a child of the light. You are holy and you share in God's heavenly calling. You're a member of the chosen one. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're a people of God's own possession, created to sing the praises of God. You've been born of God of an incorruptible seed. The evil one cannot touch you. You've been rescued by God. You've been made complete with God. You have not been given the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. You've been given the promises and the great privileges by God. You ought to put your hands together and praise Him. That's what He said you are. All those things. Hallelujah. There's a lot you have written on your heart and tablet by God. 
When you look in the mirror, I don't care what you look like. That's who you are. Isn't that good? That's good. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this. Who blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Yeah, look, just look at just look at that. The Spirit that raised Christ from the dead now, 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 now lives in you. <laughs> Woo. Romans 8, 11 says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. And let me just say this. The Holy Spirit's not a dove. He's not a fire. He's not wind. He's God. Now, He does manifest in those things, but He's not a dove. He's God. He's not fire. He came as fire. He's God. That's what He manifests as. So you don't have to go out and light a fire and say, oh, Holy Spirit. That's not, that's fire. That's how he manifests himself. But that's not who he is. He's the Lord. He's God. We read Acts 19 and we talked about it when they laid hands. I'm going to bypass and go to page 10 if you would. Prayer language is for everybody. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says this. For he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men. But to God, for no one understands him. However, the Spirit himself speaks mysteries. There's tongues for the church. And now Paul just let everybody know there's tongues for your prayer language. And he talked about building yourself up. So you have to figure out and say, Lord, I want that. I want. I was listening to Leon Patillo. And that's where I got baptized in the Spirit. My wife, it was 11 years. And she used to cry. And I, and I believe that she had it all the time. She did too. And then one day, boom, during a... A, a revival meeting, Spirit of God fell upon her, and she began to uh, 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 pray in tongues. First Corinthians 14 says this. How is it, brother, whenever you come together, each you have psalms, has teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all these things be done in edification. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or three more there to, to interpret talking about inside the body of Christ because they were all just speaking in tongues when he showed up, Paul, and he said, hey, hey, I speak in tongues more than all y'all. Y'all got to do this in order, okay? You're going to think you've been drinking. That's what he said. He said, somebody give tongues, somebody needs to interpret for the edifying of the body because in Corinthians, they went into access and thinking they were all the greatest and there was a time when people that got filled with the Spirit started thinking their church was better than yours because you didn't do it. Let me tell you, the only thing that saves you is Jesus Christ. And not one is better than the other. Can I get an amen? So we got to get that out of our head. Ain't nobody better. Oh, yeah, I do. You know, what's that? Okay. Don't worry about it. There are five signs that show you're walking in the Holy Spirit. And I'll go through them real quick. You have a love for God's Word. The sin in your life loses its appeal. You don't crave the flesh. You crave the things of God. You have a calm that says God's got this. He gives you the peace that passes all understanding. You demonstrate the character of Christ because you walk in love. And number five, the fruit flows. Galatians 5, 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is this, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. You know, when you look at all these things and you go on it, you got to understand that, how do I want to put this? Kindness and gentleness is on there too. There's a few more. Against such there is no law. I have known people personally that have prayed in the Spirit and they, they it's something they're big on, but go right out the doors of the church and treat their wife like a dog. Come on cuss and swear, I'll take a guy who shows the fruit of the Spirit all the time, ten times over a guy who says, well, I speak in tongues. Well, good, you ought to, but you know what? You should be manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. Can I get an amen? The fruit. See, when these charismatic Pentecostals, I'm more Pentecostal than charismatic, 
But in the charismatic days that I was part of and thing, you had people that every that, that, that was everything to them. They thought, oh, you've got to do this. You should be doing that. Wave the flag. I'm not against waving flags. Don't anybody go out. But they did all these things and felt like they had to do that to make God show up. God shows up when you walk in the door because he lives in you and he's with you. And there became a spiritual pride. And at times, God, they became sacred cows. They felt like they had to do this for God to show up. They felt that they had to say three words or something. They had to do this before. God shows up when you pray and ask him. He answers your prayer. He loves you. There isn't something you can do to make him. He's already here. Now, do now is there a thing where his dunamis presence shows up and you can sense it? Absolutely. But you ought to be demonstrating the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And the best way I can put it, here's what I tell people. This is one of my sayings I've done for God's the builder. Jesus is the foreman. And the Holy Spirit is the power that makes everything come on in the house. Come on. That's the way I look at it. God's the builder. Jesus is the foreman. Get all the everything right. And the Holy Spirit... Psh, Power gets on, everything works in the whole house. Because you can build the house, and if they don't hook up the electricity, the refrigerator can sit there all day and it ain't going to work. Am I right? Am I right? 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 It's sort of a good illustration, right? That's what I feel. <clears throat> First Thessalonians 1 5. For our gospel did not come to you in word only. Just come on. But also in power. Somebody hooked up the electricity, help me out. And in the Holy Spirit, in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. So the Holy Spirit enabled us in what we speak, on how we speak, and us and who we are. Because he's our teacher. Jesus said, I will give you the helper, John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit, whom my Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things. Yes. And bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. You can go to a pool party, but if you don't jump in the pool, you ain't going to enjoy everything that's going on. you got to jump in deep, 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 deep. deep. Jump on in. Come on in. He has so much for you. I've said this before. You haven't been here. A vacuum cleaner is just a vacuum cleaner until you plug it in. Then it will do what it was created to do. Same thing with the refrigerator. Same thing with the dishwasher. Same thing with your TV. Same thing with your computer. It's designed, but it don't work unless you hit the power source. And once you get born again, God's got a whole lot more for you to do. Because he just said, we didn't come to you in word alone, but we came to you in the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, man. Salvation is God's... Now, what's it? This is where I'm rounding up about the end. Salvation is God's greatest gift to the world. Would we agree? But the mighty infilling of the Holy Spirit is God's greatest gift to the church. Come on, somebody. Come on. So now once you got saved, you the church, the Spirit of God, He gave us the same Spirit that created the whole universe. He now decides He's going to live in us. Jump in the river. Come back to the one that can save your soul. Heal your body. Open blind eyes. Make the lame to walk. Come back to the one who breaks the bondage of drugs, who's the power source. Come back to the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit from Almighty God that lives in us. It's not about a denomination. It's not about a man. It's about God. Can we get an amen? I come to preach today. And I am with this. No power in hell is any match for the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it again. There's no power in hell that can match the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Girls, would you go up there? Ladies. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Look at at this. He anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, look at this, and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. They all three worked together. So should we pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Yes. 
Don't just let a vacuum cleaner sit in a box, plug it in. Don't just get saved, but get all the benefits by getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Can we stand to our feet? I want to thank everybody for joining. If you if you've never had your your heavenly prayer language, I just ask you to do this. Just say, "Dear Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want my prayer language." I pray each and every one that did that that they do that they get it, Father God. And I thank you. I ask you bless them. He loves you very much. He's given you authority over all the power of the enemy. This is Pentecost Sunday, so think about it. Open up and read it for yourself, Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2. Remember, if you're dealing in stuff that you know that you need not to, ask God to take that from you. If you want to know Jesus, just say, you want to be born again, say, God, I'm sorry. I repent of all my sin. Jesus, come into my life. I believe you died on the cross and you rose again. And I thank you for that. Now I'm saved in Jesus' name. Go on our website, let us know, those that receive Christ. Till next time, Pastor Brian said, may God bless you. Have a great week in Jesus.